Hey guys, in one of my previous video, I created this flaky test and I mentioned that I want to get rid of this system out print line. And the reason I wanted to get rid of this system out print line was you cannot control the, the log statements that comes from system out print line. So to give an example, when I'm trying to build a new function, for example, in this case, I was trying to build a flaky test. I try to experiment with certain things and I want to log some information. But once that function is working properly, I do not want to see that log statement anymore. And this is something that you cannot control from system out print line. Like before I knew a logging framework, what I used to do was I would write these statements and then I would comment it. And you know, when I want to debug something, I would uncomment it again. But this is not a very clean way of doing things. Another problem is like if you want to get some errors or warnings during logging, you cannot do that with system out print lines. So a good way of controlling this is not by using system out print lines, but by using a logging framework. So in this video, uh, we are going to cover a logging framework and in fact a logging interface um, to see you know how we can log our statements. So the solution that we're going to use in, in this particular uh, video is by using an logging interface and not a logging library. You would have heard about uh, log4j which is our logger which is mostly used by most of uh, people but we're not going to use log4j directly but we're going to use something called slf4j and let's first read about slf4j if I click on slf4j it says um, it's a simple logging for card for for Java and what it says is the simple logging for card for Java so it's a simple for card or abstraction for various logging frameworks example log4j or logback etc so that your framework is not completely tied up to any particular logging library but it's it's more tightly coupled to an interface why does it matter like if you remember a few weeks a few months back we had a severe vulnerability into log4j and like if before the patch could come for, for solving that vulnerability, like what are you going to supposed to do? Like should you let the vulnerability in or should you switch to some other framework? If you have a logging interface, you could have easily moved from log4j to logback. And you know, once the vulnerability was fixed, you can again go back to log4j. So it gives you more flexibility to, uh, you know, not tightly tie your framework with any hard-coded logging library. Uh, but to, to keep it to an interface. So that's the reason we are going to use SLF4J. So let's just go ahead and look for SLF4J uh, May1 dependency. And if I click on this, it gives me uh, this URL. And what we're, going, what we're looking for is not API module, but we're looking for this SLF4J log4j binding. So if I click on this, let's click on this one. So now it says you have vulnerabilities in this dependency and this artifact is moved to SLF4J, reload4j. So let's click on this. Let's click on this again. And this is the dependency that we're interested in. So let's just copy this and let's go back to the framework. Let's go to our POM file and let's add this interface here, right? And we are not going to keep the scope to uh, to test because sometimes I also want to log some stuff in my utility methods. So I'm going to remove the scope. And let's also add SLF4J um, uh, version on the top. So not here, but let's just put here. Let's call it SLF4J. Let's copy this and put it here and dollar SLF4J version. Okay, so now we have got our logging interface in place. The next thing that we want to do is we want to add a concrete logging implementation. In our case, we want to have it a log4j implementation. So let's look for log4j maven dependency dependency let's click on this uh, okay log 4 j core let's click on this uh, and maybe i went too quick when we look for log4j 
it's it said that it has certain uh, the artifact was moved to log 4 g code and that's why we're clicking on this and we're going here and we're going to copy the log 4 g code dependency right let's go back let's copy this here and this time it has to be 217.2 so log 4 j version let's put this one here and let's copy this and then i can change this to log 4 j version right so now we have got a logging interface we have got our uh, log 4 j version there's one more thing which i want to want to do is i want to instead of like instantiating the uh, the log 4 j implementation directly in the code i want to use some logging annotations and very good solution for that is using um, uh, lombok so for example let's look for lombok and if you're not yet aware of lombok uh, i would uh, suggest you to you know read more about it. it it's a very powerful annotation framework and for now i will not go too much into details but i will just mention to look for lombok maven dependency and i think the latest one is 118.24 so let's copy this one but i'm also wondering uh, has it not have they not published it in may one repository yeah they have so let's click on this and this is where you have uh, lombok 118.24 right so let's just go ahead and copy this and let's add it in fact above sl4j i am going to remove the scope let's copy the version now we have the latest version and let's put it here let's call it lombok version and it's 118.24 and i'm going to say dollar lombok version once you're so like one more thing because i already have got all these dependencies installed it's not showing it as red but if you're doing it for the first time most probably it will you know highlight this as as red and what you can do is you can go to your pom file you can go to maven and you can say reload project and this will reload all the dependencies for you and if it was showing as red here before it will now show it black um now we can actually go and go ahead and uh, click log in this case so let's just go ahead call it test void um, and you can say test log levels log levels and you can you can go ahead and now you can actually say log dot info and you can say uh, this is info statement right uh, info statement you can see at this moment it does not recognize this and if you add a Lombok annotation, Lombok has annotations for SLF4J. And you can see now Lombok is providing us this annotation. And now you can just write a logging statement by doing log.info. Let's just go ahead and run this. And you can see uh, it ran the code, but we are getting some warnings. It says no appendix could be found to logger. Please initialize the log for a system property. And the way you can initialize it is very easy. You can go at here and you can click a file. You can say log 4 j dot properties file. And I already have got a, a sample log 4 j file uh, available with me. So I will just go ahead and copy that and paste it here so we are keeping the the root logging as uh, information it will uh, print it out it in standard output uh, the standard output is console appender and the target is system out uh, the layout is is pattern layout and this is where i'm specifying a pattern so the pattern is uh, you specify the date you specify uh, the class name uh, the method name uh, and i think this will specify the line and this was a line which i added 
Uh, I remember when there was a uh, vulnerability uh, in log4j. So if you keep this format message now lookup is true, uh, it takes care of that vulnerability. So let's go ahead and run this test again. And now this warning should go away and we should get a proper log message. So let's just go ahead and run it. You can see the warning is gone and it's printing a date here. As you can see, this is the, the date, right? Uh, date and timestamp and you can see the name of the class this is the name of the class you can see uh, the message so this is the this is the message this is info statement and i think uh, percentage p is specifying what kind of uh, log statement it is so in this case it's information so maybe let's just go ahead and add some more log statements right and let's call it log dot debug this is debug statement log dot warning this is warning statement and log dot error this is error statement and let's just go ahead and run it again let's see as you can see now you are getting three uh, uh, statements printed and information is printed warning is printed and error is printed it did not print the debug statement. Why? Because the the root logging is at info level and at, not at debug level. And when you like whatever information level you keep, it prints the it prints everything to the to the left of it. So, for example, if you want to have only warnings, then it will only you will only get warning and error. So let's do it again. So in the left side, you are trying to reduce the warnings. And the more you go towards the right side, you get more log levels. So for example, as you can see, uh, it's going from warnings to errors to, to no logging. So let's keep it off. And now actually you will see all the logging is, uh, will be gone. So let's just go ahead, run this. No statements are printed. Now, an important question that you may, you may ask is like, when does it make sense to use what kind of you know log levels? So if if I'm running my test into into CI, I'm not going to look into uh, look into more of info things. So then maybe a warning or error will suffice. Uh, in in CI, you can just override this parameter to warning or error. When you're running stuff in your local machine, most of the time you want to see things which are uh, informational. But when things start going wrong. Maybe you want to go ahead and you know start printing more log statements. So if I keep it as debug, uh, this time you will get more uh, log statements. So now you can see it's printing all the log statements. And in fact, if you want to want to turn it to trace or if you want to turn it to all, let's just put it all. And I think now this should print more log statements. So let's just go ahead and try it out. Okay, in this case, there were no, the, uh, it's only printing out these four statements, but let's say if you're using other libraries, you might see a lot of logging statements being printed out, right? So for now, let's just go ahead and change it to info because typically that is what we'll be using most of the times. Uh, when you're trying to build a solution, then probably you want to have log.info. So let's just uh, go ahead and change this one. Let's call it current timestamp. And maybe another interesting thing which I which I forgot to mention is you can either uh, you know print print a variable like this. So that's one way of printing a variable. So let me just go ahead and run this. And you can see this is much more easier to read than, for example, you know reading this uh, value. But and another way that you can print this variable is instead of doing it as plus, you can actually make it a comma. And if you go ahead and give these two curly braces, and let's say if I give a colon, uh, let's run again. It will substitute this variable value into this uh, this curly bracket. And now you can see current timestamp, and it's much more nicer, right? So now we can actually get rid of this system out print line because we don't need this anymore because we have a logging framework in place. And in fact, I would say if you if you are building a utility method. In the beginning, maybe you want to see more information about it, but once your utility method is more robust, you can trust it. And if you don't want to see those info statements, like you know, in all your test runs, you can change the log statement from info to debug, which is what I'm going to do right now. 
and let's just run it again and this time you should see no log statements because well i'm not interested to see this i know this method works and i'm not interested to see this statement anymore um, so with this i think we have we have covered our uh, our logging video uh, like our video on, on how to add and logging interface which was SLF4j how to add a logging library which was log4j if tomorrow there are any vulnerabilities you know all you have to do is go ahead and substitute this uh, interface from uh, log4j to uh, let's say logger right and once the vulnerability is fixed you can come again and, and fix the version again and the last thing that we covered was in fact uh, one adding log for your properties and you know how you can control different log for levels how for example running from local mode uh, info is a useful level when you're trying to debug things debug is a useful level when you're trying to run stuff in ci and you want fast results you don't want to have info you don't want to have debug maybe you can just choose warning or errors so these are different use cases of you know running uh, choosing different log levels depending on what you're trying to achieve and where you're running your running your test and I think the last thing which I forgot to mention was adding Lombok to our framework and which will which gives you a lot of useful annotations that helps you uh, you know get rid of a lot of statements which you otherwise have to do so for example uh, in absence of using SLF4j if I say SLF4j uh, log4j buildung and in fact I go here this article would tell you that if you want to use if you, if you would not have used SLF4j, you would have to, you know, write this statement in every class uh, before you could, let's say, you know, use logger or, or log. And by using the notation, we actually uh, skipped writing this line in every single of our test classes. So I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if you like this video, well, you can press the like button. If you like my channel, uh, click on click on subscribe. And in the next video, uh, we would like to cover something more interesting and that is basically getting some badges here because now we have added GitHub Actions but what we have not done is uh, like once something fails or once something passes we are not getting uh, we're not getting a notification you know on our readme file so in the next video I'm going to cover uh, uh, GitHub Badges right so stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next video see you bye bye